from near record highs to a winter storm watch. A quintessential May in Colorado. 24 hours is going to look totally different. From protecting your home. When the trees get storm damage, it's never pretty. To when the snow will hit. We've always been taught that in Colorado that after Mother's Day, you're typically in the clear. We're getting you prepared with everything you need to know before the storm. I'll let you know just how much snow to expect. And before the snow hits, we're getting the avalanche. We're live at Ball Arena before it's packed with fans for game two. To be resilient is, is the key and be mentally strong. Let's just keep playing, just keep playing. Keep doing what we're doing. What's the best part about playoffs is it's a team effort and you get to win with your team. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us on this Weather Action Day at 5 o'clock. I'm Shannon Og. I'm Ann Trujillo, and right off the bat, we want you to know that, yes, it is currently 86 <laughs> degrees outside, and yes, it is going to snow tomorrow. A near 60 degree temperature drop is on the way. And the storm going to start rolling into the mountains tonight and going in depth tonight. Tomorrow is going to be among the latest snowfalls in Denver over the past 140 years. On average, the last snowfall in Denver is on April 28th. That's before Mother's Day. Before, yeah. So here's what you need to know. The National Weather Service says this storm has the potential to knock down trees cause widespread power outages and this cold snap will likely damage your plants unless you protect them. Also, the roads to the mountains are going to start getting slick tonight and will get worse as the snow picks up tomorrow. All right, here to tell us all about it, when and how much, Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson. Hi, glad this is in <laughs> ancient Greece where they do yeah. away with the messenger. That's right, that's right. <laughs> all right. Let me show you, first of all, it's nice out there, beautiful green, and that's trouble because those trees are gonna be really heavily weighted down top of the Continental Divide, they may see up to two feet of snow out of the storm system. High temperatures, 88 today. We will see a 60 degree drop by midnight tomorrow night as temperatures will drop into the upper 20s for early Saturday morning. Winter storm warning here, fire weather warning also here, winter weather advisories. Only the Grand Valley is the spot that doesn't have any color on the map at the moment. So the fire weather warnings are in effect through tonight uh, till eight o'clock. And then the winter storm warnings go in effect at noon tomorrow and okay, continue till noon on Saturday. Farther to the west, winter weather advisory, freeze warning, northwest Colorado, and winter weather advisory farther to the east. We do not have any advisories currently for winter weather up in the Weld County area south of Greeley. There's the front coming in, and let me show you what the temperatures are doing on the other side of that front. It's 33 currently at Casper, while it's 99 degrees at Amarillo, and we're sitting at 85 officially out at the airport. That cold front coming our way, with it comes moisture, a lot of that, which is good news, we need that, but the snow is gonna be a real problem, as will be the sub-freezing temperatures. Full details in about 20 minutes. What a whiplash. All right, see you in a little bit. Thank you for that, Mike. And with this winter storm watch, nearly all of Colorado is getting ready for rain or snow. Denver 7's Brian Wang is going deeper tonight on how experts say you can protect your home, your cars from falling tree limbs, and homeowners who are now bringing their plants indoors. Hey guys, there's a notion in Colorado that after Mother's Day passes, folks can feel comfortable planting their spring gardens. But with the heavy rain and snow that we're expecting, it certainly has people thinking about how they will adjust to save their plants and trees. For delicate flowers like these in this Capitol Hill neighborhood, some say they're going to do their best setting up tarps over them. But for others like Verlina McEwen, she's not taking the chance of a tarp falling over, especially with the four to eight inches of snow we're expecting. We'll probably trim these flowers up in the morning and put them in a vase and keep them in the salon for the day and enjoy them. Um, and they probably won't bloom again. These, especially the iris won't bloom again. So the lesson is stay present right? Yeah. Stay present, enjoy it while it's here. Now protecting your trees gets a little trickier. It largely depends on the size. Arborist Michael Sundberg says if it's a relatively small or mid-sized tree, there are ways you can prevent breakage from happening. But on a tree like this size, I mean with like a a long broomstick or something, you can do a pretty good job shaking off excessive weight or even shaking the, tr the trunk of the tree enough to drop snow off. And so that can help preserve not having breakage. But once you get anything bigger, you kind of have to cross your fingers and hope for the best. Now, another thing to be mindful of is the position of your tree. Do the branches tower over a power line? Do they tower over your home? Well, if they do, it's a good idea to get those trimmed before tomorrow morning. In Denver, by Wang, Denver 7. If you have any big plans for tomorrow or quite possibly Saturday, 
um, your plans might get canceled. We are getting emails into the newsroom from high schools all over the metro that are either postponing or moving graduation ceremonies indoors. And so far the state track meet is on. Also, concerts like the Global Dub Fest at Red Rocks this Saturday, that's already canceled. And we're still waiting to hear the status of other big events this weekend, including the Rockies versus Mets tomorrow and the Luke Combs concert on Saturday at Empower Field. Now, of course, some people are welcoming this late snow with open arms. We caught up with one of those optimistic people at Arapahoe Basin today. I've been skiing here since I, before I could walk. Oh, no better place I'd rather be. A basin opens up first, shuts last. Best place in the world. Yeah, I'm going to be here all weekend. I already took work off. There you go. So <laughs> for now, A basin still expected to close in about two and a half weeks on June 5th. And for the latest weather updates for your neighborhood, be sure and visit the DenverChannel.com and the Denver 7 Plus app, and it's available to download right now on your streaming device. Well, the snow really could help the crews battling wildfires in our state. Evacuation orders are still in place for the areas around the Plum Taw Fire. That's one burning in the southwestern Colorado, about seven miles north of Pagosa Springs. It's now 735 acres. Also, the High Park Fire near Cripple Creek, 87% contained at this hour. The wildfire that sparked along the entrance to the Great Sand Dunes National Park is 100% contained as of tonight. The remains of a mother missing in Longmont for more than four years have now been found. Rita Gutierrez Garcia went missing in March of 2018 after a night out with friends. Her remains were found in a remote Longmont field and prosecutors say the man charged with her kidnapping and murder will plead guilty. He's already serving a sentence of 93 years to life in prison for a separate attempted murder and sex assault case. An Adams County Sheriff's Department sergeant has been charged in the death of his three-year-old daughter. The Weld County DA says Sergeant Brett Eskom and his wife Elaine Eskom are now facing six counts of unlawful storage of a firearm. Officers were called to their home on Mother's Day for a report of a shooting. Their three-year-old Avery Eskom was taken to the hospital where she later died. A Denver grand jury has indicted 11 people on 74 counts for stealing at least 130 cars in the Denver Metro. The Denver DA says the suspects stole the cars to support their drug habits. All 11 are believed to have stolen more than $3 million worth of vehicles and other property. CDC advisors are now recommending Pfizer vaccine boosters for 5 to 11 year olds. So kids will be eligible once the CDC director signs off. According to CDC data, just 29% of children in that age group have completed their Pfizer vaccination series. Since the pandemic began, more than 4.8 million children of that age have caught COVID, more than 15,000 hospitalized. And Colorado health officials are monitoring a slight uptick in COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations. Today, the state extended the mask order for all health care facilities and places like jails and homeless shelters. Health officials say today we are averaging about 1500 cases per day, yet that is still lower compared to previous waves. And doctors are reminding people to get tested for COVID-19 if you're feeling sick and high risk people should consider wearing masks if cases continue to rise. All right, the Avs kept us on edge for game one, but of course they went on to secure that win in overtime. So now it's time to see game two against the St. Louis Blues will be any easier. <laughs> Joining us live now at Ball Arena is Denver 7 Sports Director Lionel Bienvenue. So Lionel, if anything, if it's anything like Tuesday's game, it's going to be a little loud in there for you tonight. What was that, Shannon? Yeah, it's going to be hard to hear for sure. Look, um, game one here was fantastic. Avalanche fans brought it to another level. I mean, it was goosebumps in here Tuesday night. The pom pom shaking, uh, the noise was deafening. As I said, a whole nother level from the fans. And look, don't think that doesn't make a difference. Home ice advantage is real. I mean, really, a fan has never got on the ice and scored a goal, right? Or, or made an incredible save. But the emotional part of the game, the fans can certainly play a part in that. The scenes from game one, amazing. And we talked to Andrew Cogliano today. He's played for five different teams in his career. He knows what he's talking about when it comes to judging how good the crowds are in different arenas. And Cogs gave these, these fans here in game one a plus. Phenomenal. I think uh, it's been, uh, you know, electric. I think, you know, I've seen a lot of buildings, but this one's, you know, um, you know, really, really good. And it seems like seems like they know when we you know when we get momentum and you know when you have players like Kale and, and Nate and 
um, you know, guys that really push the pace and possess the puck and, and make things happen out there. They, they feed off that. So it's been, it's been awesome. It was amazing. Just like first round, uh, they might've even, uh, taken it to another level. It was so loud in there. And, uh, you know, as soon as you step on the ice, you get just a, a shot of adrenaline and, and you're ready to go. Yeah, you heard Kemp's another level here. Okay, look, the great thing about these fans in this team is they don't get down. Even when the Blues scored the first goal in game one, fans were still as loud as they were from the beginning, and the team didn't stop either. Jared Bednar says that's what make this team, uh, th makes this team different and special. They don't get down. They keep playing no matter what. Resilience and confidence, that's what this team is all about. Can't wait for game two tonight, 7.30. We'll be back with more at 6. The greater we are at reflecting the demographics of a community, the better off we are. A push to change the makeup of police departments. It was being ignored by the law enforcement community because it didn't fit, fit their mold of you know what an officer is. How one initiative is working to level the playing field and encouraging communities to hire more female police officers. That traditional view is what's caused such a deep wedge between you know law enforcement and the communities they serve. Plus, waiting for the president's signature. And the bill is passed. Congress okays another round of funding for Ukraine. And no lifeguards, no pool. Staffing shortages force one community pool to stay closed for the summer. 